evening, friends and neighbors. Or shall I say this afternoon? Welcome back to the Detroit Tigers franchise on MLB The Show. I'm your host, longtime listener. Be sure to drop a like, hit the subscribe button, and comment below. Uh, it is time for the 2024 season to get kicked off. And it is going to be Casey Mize and Brady Singer going head-to-head to uh, right-handers getting the ball on opening day in a division matchup here. The Royals looking to find their way out of the AL Central cellar. Tigers looking to get off to a good start and maintain their uh, recent run of AL Central success. And they give the ball to the to the young righty Casey Mize as the uh, the ace of this staff for the first time in his young career. So let's head on out to Kauffman Stadium and see if the Tigers can pick up a, uh, a win and uh, get off to a great start for the season. And here we are in Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City, and it's the Royals and the Tigers as we get ready for first pitch of the 2024 season. So every team is tied for first. Every team is tied for last. And after one short ball game here one of these teams is going to be in the cellar and one will be on top it's Brady Singer going to the bump for the uh, Royals he had a little bit of a sketchy season last year with 4.33 ERA 1.47 ERA or a uh, whip rather and he's getting the ball here on opening day and it's going to start with a walk on a close pitch at the knees to Akil Badu so the Tigers have the leadoff man on Next batter, Andrew Benintendi, he gets a pitch to hit, swinging on the first pitch, laces one into the gap in left center, but that'll hang up and be caught for the first out of the ball game. And let's take a look at the Tigers lineup in this one. As it's Badu leading off, then Benintendi in left, Devers at third, Torkelson at uh, first, Meadows will DH, Baez at short, Green in center, Rogers catching, and former Royal and free agent acquisition Adalberto Mondesi will play second base and bat ninth. Two batters later, it's Spencer Torkelson down on strikes. Nasty two seam running in under the hands there to get him. And Singer escapes after the leadoff walk. And now a look at the numbers for Casey Mize. The 1.17 whip is very solid, but the 4.09 ERA, a little bit of a concern. But nonetheless, he's going to get the ball this year to start things off for the Tigers. The opening day start for the first time in his career, and a great start here as he's going to get Nicky Lopez on just three pitches, blowing him away with the fastball up and in to start things off. Then with two away, Dom Smith watches one that looked like a strike. That's ball four, however, and that's going to be the first base runner for the Royals. And it's Ryan O'Hearn, 2-2 pitch, grounder to the right side, diving stop by Mondesi, and that is why the Tigers are big on this man as he makes a sensational play here against his former team to end the inning. And we are going to be scoreless after one here in Kansas City. On to the top of the second. First batter, Austin Meadows, could not check the swing on the changeup, kind of floating off the outside corner there. He's down on strikes. Now the bottom of the second, one and two to Hunter Dozier, and that ball hit well and into right center field, down for a base hit, and the leadoff man is on for Kansas City here in the second. Next batter, Michael Massey, 2-2 two, two pitches in the dirt. Rogers blocks it, could find it for a second. And Dozier able to advance into scoring position with nobody out. We'll see if Mai is able to work himself out of trouble for once. That's not a, uh, what he's looking for there as it's a walk. It will set up the double play, however, but nobody out and two on for the Royals. Next batter, Tyler Whitaker. Hit deep to, he hits one deep to right center field. Long run for Badu. He is going to get there just shy of the wall. So the runner will tag and move up to third. And it's runners on the corners with one out. And it's MJ Melendez, one two pitch to him is a splitter up and away that he is chasing. Ugly swing there. Second strikeout for Mize, and that's a big one, but that brings up Charlie Culverson, who had a sensational at bat there. And ends up drawing a walk on a slider down and away. Actually, not a bad pitch, but Casey Mize now with the bases loaded and two outs. First pitch swing in is Lopez, and he grounds out to first. Torkelson steps on the bag, and Mize able to escape danger for once, and we stay scoreless after two. Now to the uh, top of the third, Jake Rogers is going to draw a leadoff walk as the fastball misses just high out of the zone. Then with two away, it's uh, Andrew Benintendi down the right field line on a 3-0 pitch. He is swinging, hits this one deep to right. 
That's going to be extra bases. Rogers going to come all the way around to try and score, and the throw is not in time, and the Tigers grab the lead. one nothing on the two-out double from Benintendi as they gave him the green light, and it paid off. Next batter is uh, Rafael Devers. He gets one up the middle there into center field, and that's going to score Benintendi and make it 2 nothing. Tigers. A uh, big turn from Devers there, but he retreats to first, and he would be held there as we now go to the bottom of the third. Casey Mize going to work, gets Kyle Isbell looking. Then Hunter Dozier, next batter, swing or not swinging. Another looking strike out there as he got him in the curve with the curve in the fourth inning. And he's not done yet. How about another strikeout? This one swinging, and Casey Mize now looking locked in. And it's 2-0. Now on to the fifth inning. A runner in or into scoring position here as Akil Badu steals second. His first wipe of the year. So he had a big lead and a great jump. And gets into scoring position with two away and an opportunity for the Tigers to extend the lead. And Andrew Benintendi delivers a base hit into center field. The throw comes to the plate. Benintendi going to take second on that throw. It's 3 0 Tigers and a runner still in scoring position here. And they might not be done yet. Rafael Devers on a 3 2 pitch takes one into right center field that gets down. Benintendi will score, make it 4 0 Tigers here in the fifth inning. Now Casey Mize going back to work. Nicky Lopez, swing and a miss, up and in. Got him with that pitch now for the second time, and he is not done yet. He is just flat dealing. He gets another swinging strike out there to end the inning. Now to the top of the sixth with two on and one out. Jake Rogers, just a, a soft grounder to the right side. That gets a run home, and it's now 5 nothing Tigers. Casey Mize back to work. Dominic Smith swinging. And another strikeout for Casey Mize as he is starting to rack him up as he has got eight now with just one out in the sixth. Next batter, Ryan O'Hearn, swinging at a curve down and away. Make it nine Ks for Casey Mize. Michael Massey with two out in the sixth. He's swinging ten strikeouts for Mize as he has pitched six scoreless innings. But the pitch count starting to get up there. Uh, partially because of how many times he's gone deep into a count to rack up strikeouts. Now we go to the top of the seventh. Two out and a runner on first. And Spencer Torkelson takes one to the gap. That's going to bring a runner all the way around from first and make it 6 nothing Tigers as they are just pouring it on here. And they would win this one by that final 6 to nothing. Casey Mize was outstanding and then got some help from the bullpen in the last few innings to hang on and win this one in shutout fashion. The Tigers had every position player get into the game uh, in this one. They end up with nine hits, four walks, and just two strikeouts on the day. So an excellent job by this offense today. Doubles from Baez, Torkelson, and Benintendi. The RBIs were two for Devers, one for Torkelson, two for Benintendi, and one for Rogers. Reyes hit by pitch. They hit into a couple of double plays. Akil Badu stole a bag. Mize gets his first win of the year going six and two-thirds. Three hits. He did walk four men, but he struck out ten. And then uh, yielded to Alexander, who goes in an inning in a third perfect. Floro pitched the ninth, um, setting him down in order and picking up a strikeout. The Royals just three hits on the day. Those four walks and 11 strikeouts total as they just were not swinging the bats well in this one. And two of the three hits were for Hunter Dozier which makes it hard to score when you only get three and two by the same guy. He had a double as well, but then they uh, just couldn't get it done offensively. Singer gets the loss going four and two-thirds, four hits, three walks, two strikeouts, four earned. Lynch, two and a third, five hits, a walk, two earned. And then Manuel came in, did an excellent job going two innings without allowing a base runner, but the, the uh, Tigers take this one six to nothing. And now before we go back out to our next ball game, Spencer Turnbull with a shoulder tear, and he is going to be out for at least two months, probably longer. So he's going on to the 60-day DL. Now, the reality is I would have been thinking, you know, like, oh, good, now we can just put Matt Manning into the rotation. However, he's pitched eight innings, and look at how atrocious he has been. He's just been getting shelled, walking guys, giving up bombs. He's just not very good right now. The fact of the matter is, though, that he's probably the best option we have. I don't think Tyler Alexander has the stamina to really be a starter. So now we got to go to AAA, call somebody up who can give us some innings. Um, and if we look, starting pitching-wise who we have on the roster. Chad Cool, remember how well he pitched in um, spring training? 
We're going to give him the chance. So he's coming up. Uh, we'll just call, I guess, the best double-A option up to triple-A. And then I think we have one single-A guy we can call up to double-A. Fix the rotations, and everything should work out. Uh, I'm almost even considering giving this job to Chad Cool, But I think in the long run, if we can get Matt Manning pitching well enough to just kind of stay in the rotation... You know, when Spencer Turnbull comes back, if Chad Cool's pitching well, maybe we just trade Turnbull and stick with these five. Uh, but we just kind of have to see how that goes. Uh, but that's, you know, the news in terms of what's going on between games. And now we just need to make sure that our uh, um, rotation is set appropriately. I got to look at all of the triple a and double a stuff because it's all kinds of jacked up apparently but bottom line that's tough news we're off to a five and three start but uh an injury already that is you know noteworthy because he's going to miss significant time and here we go now to detroit where it's the tigers at eight and three hosting the five and six diamondbacks as uh, Detroit playing pretty good ball to start the season. Thanks in part to that man right there. They picked him up at the All-Star break last year, and he has done, has done nothing but swing the bat very well for them since. He's off to a pretty good start, hitting 267 with six home runs and a 987 OPS through his first 45 at-bats of the year. And it's Eduardo Rodriguez on the mound. He was the ace last year. A little bit of a bumpy start so far this season, but just two starts in, not a whole lot to worry about as he's 1-1 one one across that stretch with a 4.91 ERA. And getting things started in the first here. He gets two quick outs before Connor Joe swinging first pitch. Takes one into right field just four pitches into the inning. He's already got two outs, but a runner on first, and that brings up Josh Naylor, and he's going to hit a ground ball to third. Devers will send it over to first to end the inning, and it's a harmless first for Eduardo Rodriguez. It took him just seven pitches to get through that one. And Zach Gallon's numbers so far this year as the right-hander pitching pretty well through his first two starts. A 1.23 whip and a 2.08 ERA across 13 innings. With two-way in the, in the uh, inning, he's going to get Devers swinging through a fastball on the outside corner, so it's a good start for Gallon as he sets him down in order. On to the uh, top of the second, Jordan Luplau taking one through the shift on the right side, and he's got himself a leadoff single, so an opportunity for the D-backs. With two out in the inning, Buddy Kennedy takes one into left center field. Benintendi may have had a chance to dive for that ball, chose not to, and now we're going to have a play at the plate. The relay to Baez onto the plate, and it is just late as the run comes in to score, and it is now 1-0 Diamondbacks, and they aren't done yet. Kirk Casale with 3-2 pitch looked really close, but Rodriguez does not get the call. It's a walk to extend the inning and bring up Jordan Lawler. Now first and second, two down, a 2-1 pitch to him is taken into the left center field gap. This time, Ben Benintendi going to try and dive, and he had no chance at that one. That one goes all the way to the wall. One run comes in to score. Casale going to try and come in to score as well, but Baez with a dart to the plate, and Haas drops the tag on him to get him and end the inning. But the Diamondbacks get two, and they lead 2-0 now as we head to the bottom of the second. Uh, with a runner on first and two away, it's Riley Green lifting one into left center field. Kind of got jammed on that one. That would hang up and be caught. And no harm there in that one. So on to the top of the third. Nico Goodrum down on strikes as he chased a change up down out of the zone. And that's the first out of the inning. Now to the bottom of the third. Eric Haas looking at a fastball on the corner at the knees. Nice pitch there from Gallon to get him looking. And now we go to the top of the fourth. Lou Plow swinging a miss up and in. And these pitchers kind of starting to get settled in here. As now we are on to the bottom of the fourth. That change up misses high apparently, and it's a walk for uh, Rafael Devers to start the inning. Then it's Spencer Torkelson, 3-1. and one. That pitch just off the outside corner. So nobody getting any of those calls around the edges of the zone, and now it's first and second, nobody out for Austin Meadows. Ground ball hitting through the right side. That's going to get into right field. They will hold Devers at third. So now base is loaded, nobody out for Javi Baez. 1-1 one, one pitch. Gets on top of one, rolls over it, ground ball to third. They go 5-4-3 around the horn to get the double play, but a run does come in to score. However, now the Diamondbacks with a chance to get out of this with minimal damage 
as it's now just a runner on third, two down, and they still have that one run lead. Riley Green had a hit, a pitch to hit there, but the curve kind of got in on his hands. He rolls over it. Naylor takes it to the bag to end the inning, and it stays two to one as we go to the fifth inning here. And now on to the bottom of the fifth. Swing and a miss from Eric Haas there. That was just absolutely ugly swing at that pitch. Now at the top of the sixth, Jordan Luplau swinging. He goes down on strikes again, and we're going to go to the bottom of the sixth now. Still 2-1. to one. Andrew Benintendi, 0-2. Ugly chuck, uh, check swing there as the cutter kind of fooled him, got in on his hands. He tried to hold up but could not, and a recording error as we lost the last three innings. But honestly, we didn't miss a whole lot because the final score was 2-1, to one, and there was really no offense down the stretch to be uh, spoken of. The Diamondbacks end up with seven hits, two walks on the day. They struck out ten times, including three by Jordan Luplau. Uh, just one extra base hit was for Kennedy. It was an RBI double. Lawler also had the other RBI way back in the second inning before their bats pretty much just went silent the rest of the way for the most part. Uh, but... The uh, Tigers, unfortunately, unable to get much offense going themselves. You see Lawler was caught stealing there at one point, but the Tigers just three hits on the day, three walks. They only struck out four times, so they were putting the ball in play. However, just nothing getting through or getting down to generate any kind of runs for them. Meadows had a couple of hits, but that double play by Baez was huge as it really uh, dampened their chances after that inning. Gallon gets the win, six innings, three hits, two walks, four strikeouts, and one earned as he pitched well again. And then Allen and Kayla come in and get holds, uh, pitching two innings, allowing just a walk between them. And then Gratero gets the save, pitching a perfect ninth, his first save of the season after blowing his first opportunity uh, earlier uh, in the year. And then Rodriguez gets uh, his second loss of the season, but he pitched well. Seven innings, seven hits, a walk, six strikeouts, two earned. Floro, uh, perfect eighth, striking out two. And Strom, also a perfect... Actually, he walked a man, but struck out two in the ninth. The Tigers unable to get this one done. That's going to do it for this episode. If you haven't done so, please be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment below, and we'll see y'all next time. Good evening, friends and neighbors, or shall I say this afternoon?